this is the Chof Tes. The Chof Tes. We're trying to understand the Mishnah. The Mishnah seems to say that if somebody <clears throat> broke a jug in a public place and some water spilled out, somebody else slipped in that water or uh, and got hurt, or or um, <clears throat> we said yes, they got hurt and impacted on that very spot, or fell on one of the pieces of the shards, then the person of the jug is chayiv. And Rabbi Yehuda says, it depends. If it was intentional, you're chayiv. If it was unintentional, you're potter. Now, we have no idea what Rabbi Yehuda means. What was intentional? What was unintentional? So we yesterday, we tried to explain. Rabbi tried to say, it depends if you wanted to lower the jug. So that was intentional. Or if it fell down. If you lowered it, then you are chayiv. And if it fell down, you are potter. Abaya, however, um, uh, a few days that and we're up to the Gemara now where Abaya is and trying to explain uh, what the story is. <clears throat> because if Abaya's problem was, if it unintentional means that it fell down, then why would the Tanakama say that you're, oblig- you're liable? L'chayr it's an oinus, l'chayr it's not your fault. And if it's a complete, complete oinus, then you shouldn't be responsible. So, um, and, and we say Rameir also agrees to that. Where, for example, you put something on the roof and a totally abnormal wind comes and tosses it off the roof, you're not responsible. So, Rabbi Yisrael, Elam Rabbiya, about six lines on top of the page, Chavtes Samad Aleph. Abayah is going to tell us that the Tanakama, which is Rameir, and Rabbi Yudah actually argue on two different uh, if, um, situations, two different scenarios. You drop something. So there's two possibilities. One is while it was falling, or as soon as it fell down, and you before you had a chance to pick it up. That's case number one, which is sort of like an accident or something. And the second case is that after it fell down, you say, you know what? I'm making it hefka. I don't need it anymore. It broke. I don't want it anymore. And these are two different scenarios. And in both cases, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Huda will argue. And Rabbi Meir and, and the Bai explains the situation. Elamar Bai Bai says, but Tarti Pligi. There are actually two arguments here in this case in our Mishnah. Pligi, one argument is Bishas the Fila. One argument is while it was falling down, or as Tracer says, even after it fell down, before it had a chance to pick up the pieces, yeah. somebody else slipped and got hurt. That's case number one. And we'll soon see what the argument is. Well, Pligi, and those are arguing in case of the Fila. They're also arguing after it fell down. That you decide, you know what? I'm going to make it hefker. <clears throat> and remember, we already discussed the machlekes tanoim whether boyer is only when the according to some tanoim boyer is in a shusharabim when it's ownerless, it doesn't belong to anybody. The very fact that you made a hole, a pit in the middle of the street, then you're liable. Okay. Others say no. If it's not yours, you're not liable. Other tanoim say if it's not you're not liable. It's only when you drug it in your own backyard and uh, or your own house, and then you made the area around the hefker. And you kept ownership, so that that's when you're chayv. And and even those who say that it was that that it's ownerless, and that's when you are a potter. So we had an argument to Rabbi Shmuel. What happens if you um, made a bar in your property? You mafke the whole area around it, and you retained ownership of the bar. Everyone holds that I'm responsible, but according to Rav, since I still have ownership of my boyer, and a boyer has to be a public space, according to the Tana, then it's really shown. Sure. It's your possessions causing damage. And according to Shmuel, no. That since you made Hefke the area around it, even though you retained ownership of the whole itself, that's considered boyer. And therefore, the laws of boyer kick in, which are very different than the laws of sure. For example, if somebody's pots and pans fall down and break, if it's the law of boyer, then you are exonerated. If it's the law of sure, then you are high. If a person falls in and dies, if it's the law of boyer, you're exonerated. If it's the law of sure, I'm high. So, so now, as we'll soon see, they're arguing two things. Pligi bishas the field. What are they arguing in while it fell down or as soon as it fell down? You did before, so I had a chance to pick it up. The arguing is menisko pesheya. If I'm walking down the street and I slip and I fall down and I, I, my things break, am I negligent? I should have been more careful, like we had the boiler unit, or would we say, I'm not negligent? <clears throat> I'm not negligent, it's an accident. If you hold it's an accident, then I'm not, that's Habi Huda, therefore I'm not responsible. If you hold that, no, slippage is like a like negligence and therefore I'm responsible, that's a mayor. He said that if you are chayiv. If anybody you know falls, uh, falls and gets hurt, I am responsible. It's my fault when I dropped it, when I slipped and I dropped my Kaylee. So therefore, if somebody gets hurt, that's a mayor, I'm chayiv. The other one says, no, that when I fell, it's an accident. And therefore, I'm not chayiv if anybody gets hurt. That's argument number one. What's the argument in the second case, which is that it fell down on the ground and I didn't bother picking it up. And I said, you know what? 
I'm going to make it hefker. Then, mit mafkir nezakov. If I said, you know, these pieces of shard, what in the world am I going to do this? We're going to do with the shards of, of this clay cheres. I don't need it. Hefker, anybody wants to come and take it. <clears throat> so, um, and this we say that a boy is uh, is ownerless. Um, <clears throat> so we have an argument, I told you, if a boy has to, has, has to have an owner, where a boy doesn't have to have an owner. And therefore, they're going to say, that's the argument here. The Tanoim argue. According to one tanner, according to one tanner, a boy is, is ownerless. A big, I dig a hole in the middle of the street. According to another tanner, if a boy is ownerless, I'm not, I am not, who's going who's to pay? It's not mine. Only if the boy still has ownership, only then you're chayat. <clears throat> so this is what he means when it says in the Mishnah, miskavu, not miskavu. Um, if it fell down, if it fell down and, and, and I made it hefke. Um, okay, here goes the case. That's true, but who's the owner now? If I was mafkid, we're talking about I was an onus, and I'm mafkid right after the onus. I made it hefkid. I don't want it anymore. I don't want these pieces anymore. I made it hefkid. And so therefore, like this. Even though you made it hefkid, he says you are chayiv. So maybe if anything, I'm a cause. But I'm not boy. Boy is only when I am the owner. <clears throat> um. So, so he said one argument is as it's falling around, the another one is now it's sitting there on the ground, and I made it hefke. So one of them said, "Mafke is like a chayiv. You're still chayiv, just like a boy and shusarabi." Well, my son Potter, and one of them said, "No, boy and shusarabi, you're not chayiv. Even though I made a hole, it's a terrible thing. But I'm not chayiv because it's ownerless. It's only if I obtain ownership. And here I'm, and here I made hefke." How do you know we're talking about two different scenarios? It says Tarti. It says two examples in our Mishnah. I, I, I poured out water. Somebody slipped in the water. Or the keli broke into pieces. And somebody got, got hurt on one of those pieces. The principle is the same. Why do you give us two examples? Obviously, this is what he means. There's two different cases. One is somebody slipped in the water while it fell down the water, or as soon as it fell down before they got a chance to mop it up. Or case number two, it got hurt by the shard. After it fell down, I had time to pick it up. I decided, you know what? I'm going to make it happen. Because we determined that Al-Mish are talking about two separate cases, is Braisa Nami Betarti. Our Braisa is also talking about two cases. We brought a Braisa yesterday where it says, that if, a, if your barrel broke and you didn't clean it up, or your camel fell down and you didn't stand it up, and Rameya says you're chayy for all obligations, and the Chacham says you are potter from dini adam and chayy for dini shemaim. So therefore, if there also there's two examples, there's two different cases. One is the shastafila and one is laachafila. One is they're arguing in the principle whether you slip, as you is it your fault or not, and one is if I make the pieces hefker, am I is that still considered boyer or not? Says the now let's go back to the Bryce. So you're saying the Bryce is talking about two cases. One is Bishas the Fila. Now let's understand Shas the Fila. your barrel, we understand. You fell down. The question is, is it your fault or not? I understand. It happened. Um, you can have two possibilities. It happened while it fell down or after it fell down and broke. here camel. What are the two scenarios of the camel? What do you mean? How is it your fault when the camel fell down? The, the case the one is that, that what if Nisko Pushayu, the camel fell down. Well, we're arguing with the camel is, is it the big negligent now. What are we doing here? I understand in case the camel fell down and the bottle pick it up. I decide, you know what? The camel died. I'm making it hefka. So the argument is since it has no owner, am I chayib or not chayib? But while it fell down, what do you mean they're arguing with I'm negligent not? Amr Abach, Abach says, going, I'll tell you, there is a case where you're negligent. You took the camel, the Ovra B'maya Derech Sharot Adonara. There was a, a sw- uh, the water overflowed, and it covered the road, and you couldn't see there might have been rocks there that would cause the camel to stumble. So the Balabas was like possibly a Peshaya here. So that's your argument. Nisko Peshaya not. It's a case by camel as well. So anyway, it doesn't make sense. Take it on me. If there was another alternative road he could have gone by and he went down this road, then Pasha, you're right. Then it definitely is negligent. Because everybody, why would there even be an argument? There's no other way of going. Then others, oh, so with everybody, what else should he have done? You have to walk. What can you do? So where do you find an example with a, a machlek is whether the owner was um, negligent or not? And we find it. The askil. 
he slipped. And then Vascula Bay Gamla. And then the camel kept him walking and, and fell tripped over him. So it goes back to him slipping, whether the Niskal is Pashehu or not. So you want to say is Mafkin is my misgaven. It says a says it depends. If you had intention, then you if you had no intention, you are potter. You're telling me now it means that if he made the Zokim Hefkir, if he made it Hefkir, then the then he's then he's potter. So what exactly does it mean misgaven over here? This is what he means. says, If your intention was to retain ownership, no, if you let it fall on the ground, then you are mafkir, then you are potter. But if your intention was you wanted to say, I want to keep the the pieces, then there's an owner, an owner, and you're high. There's a there's an owner to this boy. Exactly what Abiyah means by miskaven. That may hold, even if the boy is no longer yours, you're always responsible. Okay, it doesn't matter what the intention. I mean, who just said when he says the words intention over here, it means in this case that you, you let it go on the ground, generally automatically it's hefker because who wants pieces? But if you clearly said Miskavan, I want to pick up those pieces, so therefore I retain ownership. You retain ownership, and you're high if a bird. Yeah, it's automatic because we're assuming that nobody wants it, that nobody wants it. <clears throat> As, as Rashi says on top of the page, we assume that a person will make hefker the pieces. You wanted to um, to take ownership of the pieces. Rabbi Loza says Rabbi Loza is going to learn similar to Abaye Bishas Nefila Machlekes. Rabbi Loza says that he makes a comment that Machlek is Rabbi Yehuda and the Tanakam are amazed while it fell down or as soon as it fell down before you had a chance to get the pieces. The question is whether slipping is considered negligent or so therefore you're responsible or is an onus in your pot. So you might rather be infers from that. So what are you telling us? What would Rabbi Lazar hold in the in the second scenario by you presented for us that it fell down already and you made it hefty? What would it then be then? There's two possibilities. You're saying there's no argument. Either everyone holds you definitely chayiv because uh, who cares if that's bird or everyone holds your pot because bird has to have ownership. So which one is it? The my, what would it be that Deep Hakka Potter? Everyone would hold that as Potter because they hold that uh, like the the, the Tana that says that has to be ownership to be a bird. But Ikara made them chai may clearly says that a bird is chai even when there's no ownership. <clears throat> El, um, in the Bryce, it says clearly the Bryce, if the camel fell down and you didn't uh, p- clear it up, you didn't pick it up, you're chai. <clears throat> and so the chai that it's talking about after it fell down, and yet there's still arguing with Rame. Yeah. Um, um, you can tell me what everyone holds up once it fell down, you didn't pick it up. You're high. But you're going to put a butt here. The bone arguing that Bryce and I made. Elamai, Bishas the Fila, Av Bishas the Fila, Kamasha Gabaya. He's saying, I hold like a bite. Not only arguing in the case where it already fell down, but even in the case while it's falling down with the Nisko is Pashayana. Rabbi Yechon said, La Acha and the Fila Machlake. Rabbi Yechon made a comment that the Machlake is a mayor of Yudu. Rabbi Loza said the Machlake is while it fell down. Rabbi Yechon said the Machlake is after it fell down. And you made it hefty. So what would you what would I hold while it's falling down in this group of I will be shot to feel a Mayu Haka Potter. So they're not arguing. So what would you hold? That I may and the everyone holds potter. Well, but the calm and Abiyakin will come. Abiyakin himself made a comment later on. That Loi Tema, um we'll learn later on. Two people with pots, you know, walking around and they banging each other. Loi Tema must need that made he don't think that our mission is the future mission we're gonna learn. We have fouls Ramea, the Amaru says Nisko Pasheyu, that somebody who slips. Is negligent. Don't say that that Mishnah follows a mayor, which means that he holds. There's an argument whether Nisko pushes you or not, and a mayor is the one who holds that it, you're it's your fault, and therefore you're responsible. And don't think that that Mishnah has to only go contra a mayor. So it's clear Rabbi Yechon holds that there's an argument. 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 Rabbi Yechon Maybe the can hold that when it comes to Niskal, everyone knows it's your fault. Everyone knows it's your fault. You know, so when is there a chlech? You read a mayor only after it fell down and there's no ownership. But when it comes to Niskal, there's another comment later on. Like Tema Mastis and I made him, he's going to show you. He says, don't say the same comment he made it. Don't think that the Mishnah follows a mayor. That means the mayor has someone who argues with him, who holds that Niskal is not for Shayahu. So clearly, Rabbi Yechon holds is an argument whether Niskal Pesheya or not. If Rabbi Meir is one who holds that Niskal is Pesheya, then obviously Rabbi Yehuda is one who holds it's not Pesheya. So why does the Rabbi Yechon, what does Rabbi Yechon mean when he says the Machlik is here between Rabbi Yehuda and Meir is after it fell on the ground with his ownership? They're also arguing while it fell down. 
Is it your fault or not your fault? Because what he's trying to tell you over here is that uh, the mafkin the zok of the hocha who the pati rabbanu the onusu. He's trying to say here that dafka over here, dafka over here, the rabbanu say that if you made your nezokim hefka, you are pater. Why? Because it was an accident. Because they hold this school is an accident. So therefore, if an accident happened and you decided to make it hefka, I don't want it anymore, then we say, you know what? You're exempt. But if it was your fault, and you say, you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to clean up. It's hefka. Then the chacham will say, you cannot make it hefka. You cannot be mafka in the chacham after your pesheh. You can only be mafka in the chacham and walk away if it was an accident. <clears throat> um... So this is what Rabbi Yechem is to say. That this machlek is here of Rabbi Yechem, of Rabbi Yehuda Meir. After it fell down, what the din is, is dafka in a case where it was your, uh, it was an accident that it fell down. But if you decided to sort of drop, throw something on the ground, and then you know what, I'm making a hefka, I walk away, that's so reckless, it's so responsible, that you can't do that. The mafka in the zok of the hoche, who the part of the why did the say here that if it fell on the ground, you make it hefka, the honor su, because it's an honest. Because Niskel and they hold Niskel is la pesheu. I will mafkin the zok of the alma. Stop the road tonight. I throw something on the ground in the public street, a, a glass bottle, and then I say that nah, I don't need it anymore. Mechayve, they hold. Then you are So in other words, don't be medayik for Rabbi Yechon to say that you know that they're not arguing Niskel pesheu. Of course, he holds their arguing Niskel pesheu, but he's trying to say that over here in this case here. Because it was, um, it, 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 it's uh, the, the, generally that Yehuda may argue, but he's saying that over here, because it was like an accident, they were, therefore we have a machlekes if you're mak, mafke in the zaka, what the din is, or you pot your chayv, or your chayv, or your pot your But Rabbanu would agree with Ramea that if you threw it on the ground and you were then mafke in the zaka, that you would not be chayv. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's say you make the zok of hefker. What's it in? Chada, one of them says chayiv. Since uh, that's bar, you're chayiv. And the chada, one of them says potter. In order to be a bar, you have to have ownership. In other words, it started out in your property and then you made everything hefker, but not if you uh, made it in a public place. L'chayda. Lema, let us say, man the mechayiv. The one who says chayiv holds like rabbeir. The rabbeir says that if you made your camel hefker afterwards, you're still chayiv because even though it's ownerless, that's what bar is. Man the mechayiv is kerabon. And the one who holds pot is like the Rabbana that says that a boy is um has to have an ownership. Otherwise, who are you charging? So these two Amaraim are arguing in the same machlekes as a mayor. Rabbi Yudah says the Gemara no. Eliba that a mayor kuli amapei a coin to a mayor. There's no argument that what that the um madach over here. The mayor says if it fell down by accident. And you made it hefke. Your responsibility is boyer, and your chayiv. So surely, if it didn't fall down by accident, I made a boyer. I made a hole in the ground, or I made that my I made a nezik hefke in the middle of the street, and I put it down there deliberately. Of course, you're chayiv. So according to me, everyone agrees. Boyer does not need ownership. If I did it, if I put it there, if I put it there, I am responsible. So libra make a biggie. They everyone agree that even though right now you're mafke to what? It's your responsibility. You put it there. Keep pleading, libra bond. They were arguing, Rabbi Lozam Yechon, arguing in the Rabbanon who say that if you're, if there's no owner, you are potter. Keep the man the potter, the one who says potter, Rabbanon, he holds in all cases, so you're no owner, you're potter. Man the mechaiv amalach, and not that I hold like Rabbanon. I can't lay potter, Rabbanon. When did Rabbanon say you are potter if it's in the middle of the street, el the mafkin the zakov, only if you made it, hefke, the hachash of the honesty. Because like we said before, it's not your fault. It fell down. It fell down. You say, you know what? I'm walking away. I don't want it anymore. Then the chacham are very lenient and say, you know what? You're not responsible. I have a mafkin the zakov, the alma, but stop the road tonight. If I throw some, if I dig a hole in the street, or if I put something that I shouldn't have, I have no right to put there. And then I say, you know what? I'll make it hefke. Of course you're chayiv. <clears throat> so they're not they're not arguing in the same argument with the mayor. They're they're Rabbanon agree in principle that a bird does not need a balabas to be chai. But they do say that if it happened by mistake, he didn't do it deliberately. In plainest cases, you had no right to dig a hole in the middle of the street. Then you're chai. But if I if something fell down and I said, you know, I'm walking away from it, even though it's, it's wrong, it's your responsibility enough, but I'm not I'm not a balabas, I don't have to pay. So now we say who holds what to stay him. Let us conclude that Abelazu don't be chayiv. Let us conclude that Abelazu said that a boy should serve him. According to every, is always chayiv. 
always high, like Rabbi Meir, even though there's no owner. Why? Because Amr Rabbi Lazar, Mishim Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Lazar named Shmuel, we had him sachim. Shnei dvarim einan b'shusin shalad, but two things that don't belong to you, and yet for us and our custom, we should tell you treat as if it's yours, and you're totally responsible. Elohim. A boy but she said, I'm my dig a hole in the middle of the street. Not mine, doesn't become mine. I can't take possession of it. And yet I'm totally responsible. And then the Khamitz Mishesh Oslamaila. Once Pesach kicks in or era Pesach kicks in afternoon, it, it's it's forbidden to have any pleasure from it. So it's it's, it's no longer mine. And yet the trader treats it as if it's yours and you're chayim. And um at your by your by your mother. So we see clearly from here that Balaza says that a boy belongs to no one, and yet you're responsible. So obviously, that a boy, if you're a mafke, you're a thing, you're still chayim. It's a style. Clear conclusion. It's not so simple. Let us see a couple of comments Rabbi Loza made. Did Rabbi Loza actually say that? Well, Rabbi Loza, did Rabbi Loza say, if just the opposite, what we say just the opposite? The Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, we learned in the Mishnah soon. If somebody turns around you know, fertilizer or dung in the middle of the street. Uh, there's fertilizer. People used to put the fertilizer in the street that other people should walk on it. And that's how they turn it into, sorry, dung in the street. When people walk on it, it turns into fertilizer. So, so if somebody put the fertilizer in the street or the dung in the street, somebody else comes along and turns it over and turns it over <clears throat> and puts it in another place. So he didn't place it in the street. He just moved it from one port into another port. But who's it behind? And somebody else got hurt. The second person is Chai. Why? Because when he moved it, he picked it up. So he was kind of that dung, and he put it down. It's his that he put down. And therefore, he's Chai. Mm-hmm. When do we say the second person is Chai? He wanted to acquire it. He picked it up. He made a Kenyan Hagba. So therefore, it's like your possession. So even though you put it down on the ground, um, and, and we're talking about a case where you weren't mafkered it, you want to keep it and use it for fertilizer later on in your field or something. But if you had no intention, well, you picked it up. I had no intention to make it mine. I just, for the heck of it, I picked it up to move it somewhere else. Then you are potter. So what is he from here? Why are you chayv only? Because you acquired it. Because it's ownership. But if you had no intention of ownership, you potter. So what is he? Alma mafkez waka potter. See, Rabbi Lozer holds clearly that if it's, there's no owner, you potter. How can you tell me Rabbi Lozer is the one who says? Because there are two things that don't belong to a person. One of them is a boy in the street. And Hashem makes it like the trainer makes it like it's yours. Yechayiv. Rabbi Lozer clearly holds that that you don't need that um, that if it's not yours, you're not going to chayiv. You know when you chayiv a bird, only if there's ownership. I, d- I dug the hole in my property and then I made hefker to all the area around it. That's the only time you chayiv. So the boy still belongs to me. But if the boy is in the middle of the street, if I you know if I pick up the dung and I make it mine and then I put it down and I intend to come back and take it. That's when I'm chai, because there's an owner there. But if I would have left it there, I, I didn't want to acquire it, I'm put it. So the blouse clearly holds that in order to be chai, but it holds like those tanoim, that there has to be ownership. So what's going on? It's a contradiction of blouse. Well, did you say about the first guy? The second guy never moved it. But the first guy is not chai because it's no longer where he originally put it. So, so according to Rabbi Loza's understanding, he would be, if he was mafkered, it would be put it. But yeah, but we don't talk about the first guy. It's, it's, the meaning is Rabbi Loza's comment, his his personal opinion. No, said, you know why? Um, since the second guy picked it up and and put it back in its original place, that's why he is potter unless he wants to acquire it. Really, a boy which is Rabbi Yechai, regardless. I he dug the hole. Here, someone else dug the hole. Someone else put a dung there. This, the guy number two picked it up and then put it right back where it started. If he put it right back where he started, he's not chayv unless he wanted to acquire and make it his. But if he wouldn't have wanted to acquire it, then what did he do? He just put back where the original place. If any of the first guy is responsible. So it has nothing to do with what we talked about before. So the Gemara, what do you want to compare to? For example, I found a hole that was open, Kiseo, and I covered it. And then the Chazim, then I opened it up again. What did the second guy do? Nothing. He just reverted back to the first guy. <clears throat> so therefore he's potter. Same thing over here. He put the dung back, he's potter. <laughs> How do you keep it to? Possum, in the case where I put a cover on the bird, like the, my solution. The, the hole is still there. I didn't do anything. So therefore, if I take the cover back up, I didn't change anything in the first place. I didn't change anything in the second place. That's why over there, the first guy is responsible, not the second guy. Hawk over here, when I picked up the dung and I moved it away, the first guy's activity is gone. The damage that he put there in that part of the street is no longer there. 
He says, so then the guy number two, if he takes the dung away and then he puts it back, guy number two created the problem. Why should he be potter? He's talking about my sedition. So what, what, what kind of example is that? Maybe he should be high, the second guy. Even if he had no intention of picking up whatever it is, he should be high. And yet the blood says only if he had intention, which means you need owner. If anything, I'll tell you what it is. The example would be, I found an open hole with Tomama, and I filled it. So the first guy's activity is gone. And then the chaza v'chaza. And then he went ahead and he dug it open. The stalkulu my sedition v'kaimel b'shusai. The first guy's activity is gone. It's not all about the second guy. So, and that's why the second guy is chayiv. <clears throat> and because it, it took away my, it made the second guy. So now, so, so therefore, the question goes back. How come over here, Rabbi Lazar says, the only time the second guy is chayiv is if he had intention uh, to, to make it his. You, Rabbi Lazar, said before that even a boy in Shusha Rabbim Yechayiv, even though there's no owner, and now you're telling me, no, that it's compared, that his only time that he is Chayiv is if he wanted to make it his owner. If he picked up the dung, even though when he put it back, it's like a brand new activity, yet he's not Chayiv unless it's his, unless there's some propriety here. Contradiction, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar. El Rabashi, Kishahavcha Lepachas Mishlaisha. What happened over here was he didn't acquire it because he turned it over less than three Tvachim. In order to do Kenyan Hagba, to lift something, you have to lift it three Tvachim. And here he did not. So therefore, there's no Hagba here. And 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 the, and the and the original, so he never acquired it. So he didn't create the dung. Someone else put the dung here. He never acquired it because it was less than three Tvachim. But if he intended to acquire it, why Yechayv? Because it's yours. It's Mammon. It's mom. No, it's, I believe the whole that boy is a boy in Shusarabim, even if it's not yours. Over here, it was the guy originally put the dung. And if you picked it up less than three Tvachim, then you have your, there's no, you're not automatically Kaina with Hagba. But if you intended to be Kaina, if you intended to be Kaina, then you're Chayib, but not else boy. You're Chayib, else mom. And why, why are you be Kaina with less than three Tvachim? Because Hefke, normally, Hagba needs three tvachim. You sell me something and I lift it, I have to pick it up three tvachim. But hefker is so easy to be kainer because generally when I make a kinyan, there's two parts. I got to take it away from you and make it mine. And there's a whole argument in the hakir and acharenim is that the primary focus of the kinyan to take out of the first person's ownership or is the primary focus to make it mine? If you learn that the primary focus is to take it out of the original ownership, so if something's already hefker, there is no original owner, it's very easy to make it mine. So if normally Hagba needs three tvachim, Hagbab Hefke, one tefach is enough. So therefore, I can be kind it over here. And um, one tefach is enough. Um, why? We find even there's an opinion. You'll find about Matsya. There's an opinion right in the beginning as well that Habbatud Behefke Khan. If I steer at Hefke, it already becomes mine. Just by steering at it. So um, because it's, it's such an easy way of making a kinyan. But, um, <clears throat> Uh, what do you call it? Yeah. So therefore, because I never really was kind of, I never really closed up the boy in the first place. I never made it, took it away from the original person. I never sealed the boy because I never was kind in the first place. It's less than three twachim. But if I had a mind to be kind of it, even though it's less than three twachim, because I have to, you could do that, then I'm chayiv, I'm chayiv, chayiv, because I'm mammon. That's the Gemara. Well, my... And what forced Abelazer to learn this way? Um, that he, he talked about he turned it less than it for him. The time of the Chinas Kabbalah, why if you tell it, why Dafka talk about? Um, why Daf could talk about that it's less than three tvachim? Talk about a case above three tvachim, and automatically it's above three tvachim, it's yours. Why make a difference in three tvachim if you hadn't if you had intention to be clean? And no one didn't claim it with three tvachim. Amar Rava Mastis and Kashi say the Mishnah bothered him. My idea hafach listen higbia. Why does it say here hafach? Why does it say here that he turned it over? Let him just say he lifted it. El shmam and a kol hafach lamata mishloishu. Sorry for that motion. <laughs> that 
It's talking about because hafach, hafach means you turn it over, you toss it over. If you turn it over, then obviously it's less than three tfachim. That's why we're talking about less than three tfachim. That's why we make a difference. If you intend it to be kainit, if you never picked it up above three tfachim, it's still sitting where it originally was. You never fit, closed the boy off. But if you wanted to be kainit, it became your possession. That's what Rabbi makes a difference, yours and not yours. But the um, boy itself doesn't need uh, ownership to be high, but the original guy put it there. I didn't put it. The second guy didn't put it. There. The first guy put it there. And if he just tossed it over from less than three tvachim, he never really closed off what the first guy did. But if he picked it up above three tvachim, then whatever the first guy did is over. It's a new thing. But we're, because we use the word hafcha, therefore he learns in the case less than three tvachim, and it's only if he had intention to be kainer. So obviously, if Rabbi Lazar says chayiv, then obviously Rabbi Yechon holds potter. So it's not why Rabbi Yechon holds that if you have a boy in the middle of the street, no owner, you're potter. Is that really right? Does that sit well? We have comments Rabbi Yechon. But now we learn. We'll learn in the next mission. If somebody hides, well, later on, if somebody hides a thorn or um, a piece of glass, or Hagoida Gidre Bekoitzim, he makes a fence full of thorns sticking out. Begoda Begeda Shenofish Rabin, or a fence that fell into the street. Usually a fence is made out of stones. Here you made a, st- a fence with thorns that can hurt people. They you know they come too close to the wall. <clears throat> or a, a, a wall of stones fell into Shusrabin. Vuhuzik Behen Ach, and somebody else tripped, got hurt in any of these senses. Chai Beninska, you're obligated. You're Chai. But Omar Abyechen Abyechen has said, when do we say that if you were affected by the thorns, he made sure that he stuck the thorns into the main street. So then it's his fault. People got hurt. But if he brought it into his own property. So therefore, it's, what? it's like a bird that is his own private property. That even though he made the area around the hefty, he said, people, you guys, you want to walk a little bit on my property, I'll give you some adverse possession. Uh, you are potter. <clears throat> But Samson might have a potter. Why, if it's in his own property, is he a potter? Because the boy he holds an order for a boy to be chayv. Dafk, if there's no owner, you're chayv. But if there's an owner, then the, um, um, what? It's, it's, you're a potter because it's in my property. So, when, but when is boy chayv? Only the shusrabim. Alma, so we see mafkin nezok of chayv. So we see from here that what? That a mafke in the zakav is chayiv. How can you say Rabbi Lozer want to hold that if you made hefke your 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 pot that Rabbi Rabbi Lozer holds that you are chayiv and Rabbi pot Rabbi Yechon chayiv? Sorry, you say Rabbi Lozer holds chayiv, right? That's what you said. We were trying to work out who says what, and we concluded Rabbi Lozer holds that you're chayiv if it's in the street if there's no owner. So Rabbi Yechon was all pot, but Rabbi Yechon clearly says. That you are chayiv in the street, and the reason why you are potted if you made these thorns is because it's on my property. On my property, it's my it's my bird. Who said you should walk here? So I'm potted. But if it will be in the main street, I'll be chayiv. So we see the bichon also holds a bird, even though there's no owner. You're chayiv. No, really, that bichon holds that if you're there's no owner, you're potted. So how come it's in your own street? Does he say oh, your own property? Does he hold you chayiv? But Samson, my time of potter. You know why if it's done in your property, you're potter? So the eat Allah we learned. Because it has to be boy. You tell me in the street, you're potter because the owner. You tell me in my house, I'm potter because there is an owner. So, so when you chayiv boy? He says, no. Boy is, boy is chayiv if, if there's no owner. You know why over here you are potter if it's in your property? So the eat Allah we learned. You should not have rubbed yourself People generally don't rub themselves against the wall. They did it's their own fault. <clears throat> That's why I'm potter. That's why I'm potter. Saying about me, I'm Rabbi Yechon. Rabbi Yechon actually say that. Rabbi Yechon Aloch is Tam Mish. Rabbi Yechon says clearly that the Aloch is like Tam Mish. You're telling me Rabbi Yechon holds that if you there is no owner, you are potter, and Rabbi Loza the one who tells there's no owner, you're chayiv. But Rabbi Yechon said clearly that the Aloch is always like Tam Mish. And Rabbi Yechon and the Tam Mish says, "A chayiv boy b'shus Rab, you dig a hole in the middle of the street." The nafal the toich If a cow or a donkey falls in there, the mace and the cow or the donkey dies, chayiv. You're chayiv. Clearly, what we see from here that if there's no owner, you are chayiv. Rabbi Yechelen says a rule you always follow. Stam Mishnah. Stam Mishnah says a boy, a boy without an owner, you're chayiv. So Rabbi Yechelen must hold that a boy without an owner is chayiv. And you just conclude before Rabbi Loz is the one who says that a that a boy without an owner is chayiv. 
Because we said Shnei Dvarim, that two things don't belong to you, Hashem, and and the Eibush makes as if it's yours. So what's going on here? Who's the one who says Pater? Who says Chayiv? Um, Rabbi Yechon Chayiv, Rabbi Yechon Pater. What's going on here? We said before that Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon Rabbi Yechon It's not a problem. Hodidei Hodidei Rabbi Rabbi Shmo, Rabbi Lazo, he's quoting before Rabbi Shmo. Rabbi Shmo holds that a boy that's not your, you're no owner, you're still chayiv. But Rabbi Lazo personally holds that a boy, in order to be chayiv, you have to have ownership. And that's the example we said before about the dung and so on. That in order to be chayiv, there has to be, you have to, you have to intend it to be kind of the dung in order to be chayiv. So Rabbi Lazo holds in order to be chayiv, you have to be kind of. Rabbi Yechon holds that a boy without an owner is chayiv, because that's what the trader says, you, build, you dig a boy in the middle of the main street. That's when you're chayiv. And this is what Rabbi 